back in December, I did a preview of Divinity 2 Ego Draconis for the YouTube channel, like totally awesome. As Belgian developer Larian Studios gave me an advanced copy of both the Xbox 360 and PC versions of the game, I've had nearly a month to play through them both before the game is released. Now, I had a really wonderful time playing through this third-person action role-playing game, so I'd like to give you my thoughts and a comparison between the PC and 360 versions of the game. So, let's check it out. The basic plot of Ego Draconis is that Damien, the villain that was banished at the end of the first game, has returned to the realm of Rivalon to seek vengeance on those who imprisoned him. Damien enslaves the most powerful beings in the world, the Dragon Knights, who are humans with the ability to transform into dragons. The Dragon Knights begin wreaking havoc, so a group of heroes known as the Dragon Slayers form to rid the world of evil, and of course, you're the newest recruit. The game opens in the town of Farglow, which will serve as a tutorial where, in addition to learning the mechanics of the game, you gain the abilities to both communicate with spirits and to read the minds of those around you. Once you feel you've got the ropes down, your mentor informs you that a dragon has been spotted in Broken Valley, and your squad is being sent to take care of it. Shortly thereafter, a series of unfortunate events leads you to a fallen dragon knight who, for one reason or another, grants you with her powers, ironically, making you both the hunter and the hunted. The game really picks up from here as you become more powerful and hunt down Damien. There were a couple things that bugged me though. The introduction video really doesn't tell you anything, like who the characters are and what's happening, and the tutorial just kind of starts without any backstory at all. Finally, the ending of the game is also a huge disappointment, but it without a doubt paves the way for Divinity 3. Ego Draconis took me roughly 30 hours to complete, but I didn't even scratch the surface of all of the content in the game. There are simply a ton of quests to do and places to explore. The thing is, you actually have to do a lot of the side quests to ensure that you're leveling up properly, or the main storyline missions will just kick your ass. Now, having played both versions of the game, I can say without a doubt that the PC version is greatly superior to the 360 version in every aspect. I'm not saying the 360 version of the game is bad by any means, the PC version is just way better. The inventory management in the PC version is very well designed. You can see all of your equipment and even preview it on your avatar. The 360 version provides no preview and makes it very difficult to even compare the stats on various items. There are probably 50 different spells and skills that you can learn throughout your adventure, but the 360 version only lets you map up to 8 of them to your hotkeys, and that shares the same hotkeys as your potions and items that you'd want to use as well, while the PC version gives you many more options. It's also much easier in the PC version to dodge incoming attacks and roll around and basically enjoy the mechanics of the melee combat. The 360 controls are just awkward when it comes to that kind of stuff. Not yet. Ow! From the start, you'll learn your character is classless, which is a great feature in an action role-playing game like this. You'll be able to mix and match skills and spells from the Priest, Mage, Warrior, Ranger, and Dragon Knight trees, which means as you level up, you have to ensure you have a proper balance of stats to support all of this as well. Along the same lines, initially the game is pretty boring and dull, but once you gain some of these new skills and gear, it gets very addictive. This game is epic, I just couldn't put the controller down. Aside from the ability to learn all the skills and spells, about 12 hours into the game, you gain the ability to turn into a dragon. The dragon has its own set of spells it can learn, and it also has its own set of equipment that you have to manage. Unfortunately, you can't use the dragon to fly anywhere you want to kill all of the regular enemies. There are specific dragon objectives and places to fly, which is kind of a letdown. Nonetheless, it's always awesome jumping off of a cliff and changing into a dragon. Around the same time, you'll also gain access to a battle tower, where you can store all of your extra items, brew potions, enchant your gear, train, and even construct and customize your own necromatic battle pet, who is an essential companion in most of the tougher fights. Now, Divinity 2 is not without its flaws, as the 360 version is very buggy. Nearly 50% of the time after you die and reload the game, it locks up, forcing you to reload from the dashboard. Other times, my equipment would just unequip itself. Characters and monsters would just disappear, scripted events wouldn't fire, and sometimes when you load your game, it would load you in a location not even close to where you saved it, sometimes in a completely different zone. 
Frankly, I don't know how the 360 version of the game passed its quality assurance check with these massive bugs. Also note, the game is very difficult. It's very important that you do as many side quests as possible to keep your level up, or you're gonna get whooped up on. The environments of the game are absolutely beautiful, especially in the PC version. You can actually see the grass move as you walk through it, the trees sway in the background, and the water splash around you. There's a pretty significant difference in the quality of the PC version when compared to the 360 version, but I've got to hand it to Larian, as the 360 version still looks stunning, especially the lighting effects. But with great graphics comes a taxation on your hardware, and there are many times when the 360 is going to suffer from frame rate issues and lag up a bit here and there, particularly in a few boss battles near the end. To accompany the great graphics, there's also a wonderful soundtrack, and it wouldn't be an RPG without a ton of voiced acted dialogue. Recall that Larian is a Belgian developer, and as such, you'll be graced with a ton of European accents with your characters. Thankfully, the game is not bogged down in dialogue like many other role-playing games, so most of your time will be spent out slaying monsters. That may sound a bit vague, but don't worry. Farglow will explain itself. I had an absolute blast playing through Divinity 2 Ego Draconis. That is, once I got a hang of the controls and upgraded my weapons and armor past the basic gear. The game held my attention the entire time I played, and I just couldn't wait to see what was going to happen next. And better yet, I couldn't wait to see what my character was going to improve on, and see both what skills he was going to learn, and how cool he was going to look with the new armor. While there are significant differences between the Xbox 360 and PC versions of the game, both are very fun to play. The graphics are beautiful and the gameplay is addictive, but there are still plenty of bugs that need to be worked out. Nonetheless, this was a great way to open the new year. Make sure to leave your questions and comments and rate this video below. Check back often as I've got a full lineup of big name games coming up over the next few months. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and register at zeitgeistgamereview.com.